When the polytheists were defeated in the Battle of Hunain, they began to scatter in all directions. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered the Muslims to follow the fleeing enemies. When the Khawazans were defeated, the Sarkafids of Taif were also defeated and retreated to the fortress of Taif. Malik bin Af, the commander-in-chief of the Khawazan army, took refuge in the fortress of Taif with his people. From time to time, the Muslims captured or killed the fleeing Khawazan and Sarkif tribesmen. Since the Khawazans had come to Hunain with all their possessions, the Islamic army took a lot of beauty. The number of captive women and children taken from the Khawazin was 6,000. The beauty included 24,000 camels, more than 40,000 cattle and 4,000 okiya of silver. When the Prophet peace be upon him was walking around the battlefield, he saw a woman lying on the ground who had been killed. He was very saddened by this. He sent a message to all the commanders and forbade the killing of women, children and slaves. The Meccan polytheists in the Islamic army were frightened at the first wave and left the battlefield. Thus, they could not see the victory and could not benefit from the beauty they wanted. When they went to Mecca, they frightened the people by saying that the Islamic army had been defeated and that the Prophet might have been killed. The governor of Mecca, Attab bin Asid radiallahu an, was very saddened when he heard the news, but he said the following words to calm the people. If Muhammad peace be upon him is dead, Muhammad's religion is alive. Allah is alive and immortal. It was not yet evening when the news came that the Prophet peace be upon him with the help of Allah, had defeated the army of the Khawazin and that the Prophet had gone with his army to besiege the fortress of Taif. Having been defeated in the Battle of Hunayn, the tribe of the Sakif and some of the Khawazins took refuge in the fortress of Taif, locked the gates and prepared to fight. When the Prophet peace be upon him learned that the tribes of Khawazin and Sakif had closed in on the fortress of Taif, he ordered the siege of the city. Khalid bin al-Walid was given a force of thousand men and sent to Taif as a vanguard. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, also moved towards Taif at the head of his army. The people of Taif knew that they would be under siege. So they repaired the castle and stocked it with enough food and drink for a year and plenty of stones to throw from the castle with slingshots. Malik bin Auf, the commander of the army, stayed in this fortress to defend Taif. In the early years of Islam, when the polytheists of Mecca became increasingly harsh in their behavior, the Prophet peace be upon him thought of taking his invitation to a center outside Mecca, taking with him Zaid bin Harise, who had been murdered in the Battle of Muta, he went to Taif to invite them to Islam and seek refuge under their protection. However, the people of Taif, who opposed the Prophet's invitation, mocked him and had him stoned. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said that what he experienced in Taif was more severe for him than the day of Uhud. When Khalid bin Walid arrived in Taif and saw that the Sarkifids had taken refuge in the fortress and were waiting in a state of war, he set up his headquarters in a place near the fortress and asked for a meeting with them. But the Sarkifids rejected the offer of a meeting and said, O oh Khalid, no man will come down to you from us, nor will you come to us. Surely, your master has never met people other than us who know how to fight. Khalid bin Walid said, Listen to my words. In Medina and Khaybar, those who had fortresses and forces surrendered to the Messenger of Allah. 
he sent a single messenger to Fadak. They too submitted to his judgment. I remind you and warn you how the Jews of Quraiza had to submit to the messenger of Allah after they were besieged for days and their warriors were killed and their children were taken captive. The messenger of Allah has conquered Mecca and defeated and captured the Khawazin at Hunayn. You are stuck in the earth only in your castle. Those around you have become Muslims and have been left in peace. The people of Taif replied by saying, We will never leave our religion. Meanwhile, the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him reached Taif via Nahb. The siege began after the people of Taif refused to surrender and declared that they would continue to defend and fight until their supplies were exhausted. In the first phase of the siege, the people of Taif began to rain arrows from their castles on the Muslims. The people of Taif were firing long arrows like pikes over the walls, and they were accurate. To protect themselves from these arrows, the Muslim army raised their shields and ran towards the walls. At that time, the people of Taif had brought a magician woman up on top of the castle and wanted to protect the castle against the Muslims by making her expose her modesty and divert the Muslim's gaze. Unable to withstand the intense arrow fire, the Islamic army retreated. The Islamic archers began to fire arrows at those on the walls. One of the arrows of the people of Taif struck Abu Sufyan in the eye. Abu Sufyan came running to the Prophet. He said, O Messenger of Allah, this eye of mine has been lost in the way of Allah. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to him, If you want, I will pray and Allah will restore your eye. Or do you want him to do it in paradise? Abu Sufyan said, I lost this eye in the way of Allah and asked for the return of his eye in paradise. For 10 to 19 nights, the Saqifis resisted by throwing arrows and stones at the Muslims from Taif. A catapult was built with the advice and engineering of Salman al-Farisi. From this catapult, stones started to be thrown at the walls of Taif. At the same time, a dead babe made of cowhide was built and brought close to the walls. When arrow shots failed to stop the rampart, the people of Taif threw red hot irons and skewers and succeeded in splitting and burning the dead babe. They forced the Muslims to get out from under the dead babe. Those who were burnt by the red hot skewers were murdered and some of the survivors were murdered with arrows. Our Prophet, peace be upon him, announced that the slaves who would come out of Taif and take refuge with him would be freed. Thereupon, 20 or 40 slaves secretly came out of the fortress and joined the Muslims. In order to force the Sarkifids to surrender, the Prophet, peace be upon him, ordered that the vineyards of Taif, where they grew rare grapes, should be destroyed and that everyone should cut five of the trees whose fruit was inedible. This was to weary them into submission. At the time when the vineyards were being cut, a man from the Sarkiv stood on the castle and said, Go shepherds, go Mohammed's flocks, go slaves of Mohammed. Do you think that by destroying our grapevines, we will fall into poverty and hardship? The Prophet peace be upon him prayed by saying, O oh Allah, send him to hell. Sa'd bin Abi Waqqas immediately shot an arrow and stuck it in his throat. The man rolled down from the castle, dead. Then the Sarkif said, Do not spoil and destroy the goods. Either we will keep it or it will be yours. For the sake of Allah and the right of kinship, do not touch the vineyards. Then the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, 
I am leaving your vineyard for the sake of Allah and the right of kinship. And he gave up cutting the vines any further. The Muslims asked the Prophet's permission to attack the fortress of Taif altogether. The Prophet said, I do not think we will conquer it. We have not been given permission to conquer it for the time being. Omar radiallahu an said, So you are not allowed to prevail over them? The Prophet peace be upon him said, Yes, permission was not given. Hazrat Umar said, O Prophet of Allah, can you not pray to Allah against the Sakif? The Prophet peace be upon him said, Allah has not given permission to pray against the Sakif either. Hazrat Umar radiallahu an said, Then why did we kill people against whom Allah did not allow us to pray? The Prophet peace be upon him said, You should emigrate immediately. Then Hazrat Umar announced the Muslims to prepare to return. When the announcement was made to return, the Muslims started talking and going back and forth to each other, saying, How can we go back without conquering Taif? We will not leave this place until Allah grants us its conquest. By Allah, these are lesser and lesser than what we have encountered so far. We encountered the hordes of the Meccans and the Khawazin, and Allah dispersed them. These are but the fox in its hole. If we continue to beseech them, they will die in their huts. Talks and disagreements multiplied among them. They went to Abu Bakr radiallahu an and talked to him. Abu Bakr radiallahu an said to them, Allah and the Messenger of Allah know this matter better. The command comes to the Messenger of Allah from the sky. They went to Hazrat Umar. Umar radiallahu an refrained from interfering in this matter and said, We saw the incident of Hudaybiyah. At Hudaybiyah, doubt entered me that no one but Allah knew. On that day, I appeared to the Messenger of Allah with words I had never used before, and my household and property were almost destroyed. There was good for us in what he did by Allah. There has never been a better conquest for the people than the peace of Hudaybiyah. More people became Muslims without the use of the sword than those who became Muslims from the day the Messenger of Allah was sent as a prophet until the day the peace was written in Hudaybiyah. There is good in what the Messenger of Allah did. I can never, after that, turn to him and object about anything. This is the work of Allah. He reveals to his prophet whatever he wishes. When they were leaving Taif, the Prophet peace be upon him said to the Muslims, There is no God but Allah. He is one. He has fulfilled his promise, helped his servant, and defeated the gathered tribes single-handedly. Say, we are, by Allah, the repentant, the worshippers and praisers of our Lord. The Muslims said, O Rasul Allah, pray to Allah against the Sakif. The archers have hurt us. The Prophet said, O oh Allah, show the Sakif the right path, bring them to us. Before leaving Taif, the Prophet said, Inform Malik that if he becomes a Muslim and comes to me, I will give him back his household and his property, and I will also give him a hundred camels. When Malik bin Af heard about the promises made by the Prophet peace be upon him and what had been done to his people, he got on his camel and came to the Prophet, peace be upon him, and became a Muslim. The Prophet gave him back his household and property and also gave him a hundred camels. He appointed him governor and commander of the tribes of his people who had become Muslims, namely the tribes of Sumaila, Salima and Fahim. These tribes lived around Taif. Malik bin Af said, O Messenger of Allah, I will overcome the Sakif for you and raid their livestock until they come to you as Muslims. He took his tribes with him and fought the polytheist tribes, especially the Sakif. He made raids on them. He made the Sakif unable to go out to their pastures outside the walls of Taif. He raided and captured the livestock that went out and killed the men. Malik bin Af's raids became very difficult and tedious for the circus.